So in this video, I'm going to compare the Gigabyte B760M DS3H DDR4 to the Gigabyte B760M Gaming X AX DDR4 motherboard. Now, there's only so many things we can compare in this video. We're not going to be able to go into the uh, the BIOS at the moment, nor are we uh, going to take a look at uh, VRM temps. Though you would expect that this one on the right would handle your CPUs uh, a little better than the one on the left. All right, so let's start with the easy stuff. LGA 1700, they both have it. And normally, folks, you would keep your cover on, but uh, I'm going to um, open this up so you can see what that looks like. Hopefully from that angle, you can see it. Both of these will look the same, all right? Now, both of these will support 12th and 13th gen out of the box, all right? So you don't have to do a BIOS update like you would with a 600 series motherboard. So that is definitely a big plus, all right? Let me just adjust this. I don't feel like I've got everything in the camera angle. Now, I do have uh, some of my 12th and 13th gen CPUs in the background, and there's a reason they're there. And we'll uh, take a look at that at some point in the video. All right, other things to compare. Well, we've got Gen 4 uh, M.2s there. Both have the what looks to be the exact same uh, heat sink over them. Both of these have this cool uh, gizmo to help you get your graphics card out. It's amazing when you have a massive cooler how hard it is to get your finger on these things to remove your graphics card. Both of those have that nice feature. I don't know why it took these guys so long uh, to come up with that, but this has your armor plated PCIe 4.0 by 16, and that one, you know, uh, has the cheaper plastic version. This has another PCIe 4.0, uh, but this is the 4.0 by 4. All right, and this guy has two of the smaller ones, which are good for obviously uh, different expansion cards like maybe uh, Wi-Fi. All right. Uh, once again, we said in the title DDR4, so four RAM slots. Uh, I don't remember offhand what the speeds of these are. Hopefully I'll remember to put it down below. That, you know, may adjust as they have BIOS updates. You may get some faster speeds. Uh, so therefore, I didn't actually look that up at the time of this video. But um, something to check out on the website, the manufacturer's website for both of these. 24 pin ATX uh, power supply, right? This is going to power up your motherboard. Both of these, of course, have that. Um, bouncing around a little bit more. Both of these have a uh, USB 3.2 header. So this is going to uh, power up your uh, USB 3.0, 3.2s on your case. The one on the right has the Type-C Charlie. The one on the left does not. You've got about the same limited number of uh, case fan headers on these. This one, I believe, has one or two more. Uh, it's a very uh, small number, but that's what you get with Micro ATX. Both of these have four uh, SATAs. This one has two horizontal here, two vertical here where this guy has two vertical here and two horizontal there. Pretty much the exact same uh, front, excuse me, the same headers down here. You've got your HD audio, and I'll just point to them. HD audio, then we'll skip over to the other stuff that matters. You've got your USB 2.0s, and then over here, folks, are all your front panel connectors, all right? plus a uh, connection for that PC speaker. Now you will notice both of these have the CMOS. There's a CMOS reset, all right? And then they both have BIOS flashback, which will mean they'll both have a USB, um, dedicated USB for BIOS update. That's about all in this, this region that's... Uh, probably we're talking about now 
Up in here, you can see much smaller heat sink. Um, I don't know that uh, you can see really the power stage in the VRMs. I don't believe they differ that much on these two motherboards. It's just one has a much nicer look to it, bigger heat sinks. But otherwise, uh, these are very similar in that regards. Um, now, when you are looking at these, as far as CPUs go, I have ran i5-13600KF in either one of these. Um, you know, is that ideal? Not necessarily for this one. Uh, if you're going to run a CPU, an unlocked CPU in a basically a locked motherboard, um, you know, this one would be a lot better than that. Uh, something like the Aeris Elite AX B760M may be, you know, just a little bit better than this guy, but they're they're going to be very similar. Um, so you can pull that off, right? Now, what I wouldn't put in this, I'm not going to put my i9-12900KS in here, and I sure as heck wouldn't put the i9-13900KF, uh, for that matter, the i7-13700KF. But you can get away with the i5. Um, it may run a little warmer than, than you would want. And definitely, you know, it's, it's meant for a uh, Z690. Now, an i5-13400, uh, i3-12100F-13100, all those, you know, would be great for uh, either one of these motherboards. Even the locked i5s, like the i5-13400 to the 13600. All right. Turning this, and it almost looks like we're running out of juice on our cell phone. So one other major difference between these two, you've got Wi-Fi on the Gaming XAX. You have a um, built-in I.O. shield. This does not. This one has additional video uh, out on it. You've got VGA and two uh, display ports and an HDMI, where this one has display port and an HDMI. Got the old PS2 connector, you know, which I'm not sure why they provide that. I'm not, I don't know anybody that uses that. Uh, two regular USB 2.0s. This one has four. All right. Dedicated USB drive here, and then USB 3.2s, and Ethernet 2.5 gig. And I believe this one also Ethernet 2.5 gig. You've got mic line, headphone out, line out, the same as this side. This one has a Type-C Charlie header where this one does not. So if there's one thing I don't like about this one, folks, is the lack of that, all right? So there are some definite benefits of this one for some of you. Uh, price, these are coming in, I think, at 119 And this guy came in at uh, 159 uh, Of course, they're on sale right now on Newegg for 149 if you're checking. Now, is this worth that much more, you know? Well, you get Wi-Fi. You got to go buy a Wi-Fi card with that or a USB thumb drive Wi-Fi. Then that's going to cost you, you know, a little bit of uh, money, right? So uh, that aspect makes these a lot closer in price. If you have to have Wi-Fi, you know, the cheapest you're going to probably find that for a Wi-Fi card is, is probably, what, 20 to $30.00. Uh, sometimes you can find cheaper, but uh, that just made this, you know, a lot closer to the price of that. Now, otherwise, uh, feature-wise, you know, very similar. Um, definitely could handle a slightly better CPU over here than the left. Hey, thanks for checking out my video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.